Alright, here we're looking at the base of our actuator assembly. And this was built around a Lazy Susan bearing purchased at Home Depot. It's a 6 inch Lazy Susan bearing. And then a framework was built around that using angle iron. It's 6 inches by 7.5 inches. And then legs were added to bring it up. And those legs are six and a half inches. So four of the six and a half inch angle iron. And that's actually three quarter inch angle iron. Thicker could be used. On top of that framework, one inch angle iron was used to build the framework which the shaft rests on and that's six and three quarter inches with an overall length of nineteen and a half inches and you can see that the tailpiece was made by cutting notches and just creating an angle that tailpiece is those uh, pieces were cut three and a half inches and then large washers were welded to that to create a pivot point for the tail assembly. Now the pillow block bearings are on 10 inch centers and centered in the middle of the framework. The actuator assembly itself is made up of several parts. First we have a 5 8 inch shaft that is an overall length of seven, 18 inches. So we cut the 5 8 inch rod 18 inches. That 5 8 inch rod was also used at the pivot point for the uh, lever and that was cut five inches. So we have the shaft resting in two five-eighths inch pillow blocks and then we have on the back end where we're transferring power the gear hub from tractor supply and that has a small piece of angle iron with a hole drilled in it welded to it we were look. My uh, actuator assembly moves a total of three inches, so we wanted to have an inch and a half from the center of the shaft to the center of the hole here. Okay. From there, we transfer our rotational movement onto the lever assembly itself. Now, the lever assembly is made up of three rod end ball joints. There's three ball joints. They are connected on one end with a piece of all thread. Now these are fine thread fixtures so you'll make sure you buy the the 3 8 fine thread that matches up to that. And then uh, coupling nuts were welded to a piece of angle iron projecting out uh, about a quarter of an inch, almost half an inch on one end and then flush on the other end. Now from the back end of the lever five inches was the pivot point itself and then another three and a half inches project out from there so we have a difference so that we get more uh, leverage on the lower end on the pump side. Now one thing of note the coupling nut on this end should be welded at a slight angle for proper alignment. And if you see I, I ended up having to bend the angle iron 
and weld a, a patch to get just a little bit of offset because this didn't have enough uh, angle and was kicking the rod out. Now, from there, we go to the pivot rod itself, which is made up of two pieces of angle iron and the 5 8 inch rod that was milled down. Now, I milled these down with the hand grinder. A bench grinder or a lathe would work much better. And then pieces of angle iron were milled for brackets to attach that. From there at this point, we transfer to a rod, another all-thread rod. That all-thread rod goes down and connects to a yoke end. The yoke end, in turn, is connected to a universal joint. Now, I don't know that the universal joint itself is going to be a necessity. We will need this pivot motion. I'm not sure that we'll need this pivot motion. But I went ahead and built the universal joint just as a safety precaution. And that was built using two large nuts that fit inside of this yoke and a bolt. And then the final connection from the universal joint is PVC cap. The PVC cap is allowed to rotate because the windmill itself will rotate. And then that will connect to our pump column. Now the tail assembly is held in place with a, a really large bolt that I had to cut off to be the right length. And it's actually designed to be removable. Now the measurements on the brackets for the pivot point are three inches long with the holes board dead center. And then you'll notice that I have two 5 8 inch spacers and then a 5, the, a five 8 inch spacer was also welded on the bottom of the lever and that's held in place with a one inch by it's a one inch angle iron cut one inch wide just to give it a little more security a little more strength now we're moving on to the tower head itself The tower head, the top of the tower head is six inches by six inches. And that is where our Lazy Susan bearing will attach. And that's resting on legs that are 17 inches long. There's four of those. And they connect to another square it's 10 inches long. It's 10 inches square. And this is what will attach to the top of the tower. And actually, it's beneficial to, do, to build it this way so that you can work on the windmill without it having to be sitting up on the tower. It allows you to do bench testing to make sure all of your uh, components are working together properly. I think that does it for now until I put the windmill back together.